If you want to load up the presets, go to the hamburger menu again, open external preset, navigate to the work files, visual patches, and then we've got base offbeat 01. So just load that up. So quite a nice sort of EDM sounding baseline. Again, not massively complicated, but it is a step up from what we did with the pad. So we've used some sort of wave shaping or some of the vital wave shaping capabilities. And as per usual, what I'm gonna do is reset this and make it from scratch. Obviously just carry on with the preset if you want to. All right, let's initialize the preset. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go and change this to a square wave. Uh, Cause at the moment, actually let's just solo this. So it's not really a very nice bass sounding oscillator. You can use a saw wave, but I tend to find a square wave works a bit better, at least as the sort of bass as the sound. So let's go in and go to the factory bank and go basic shapes. And we'll just change this till we get a square. So let's just change that down one octave as well. Okay, and then we're gonna add another oscillator. I'm gonna change this up one octave though, and we'll leave it on the initialized preset, which is just a saw wave. So one thing you can notice straight away is that it has this kind of movement to it. Each note sounds very slightly different. It's almost like a phasing effect. So the way to get around that is to set the phase of the oscillators to 0%. and then it just sounds the same on every single hit. All right, so that's fine, but let's just add a bit of variation to this. So we're gonna go into here and select Formant Scale. And as you can see, it just sort of modifies the waveform a little bit, depending on where you set it. We can play around with this as we go. Let's just get all of the oscillators in though. So let's go and activate oscillator three. Again, we'll just use the normal saw wave and let's change this to harmonic stretch. So these are all just various different ways of changing or morphing the wave shape. Again, we wanna set this to zero randomization. So we get a nice consistent solid bass sound. It's no good when it's sort of morphing all over the place. Just a little balance here with the volumes. Uh, and let's just change this as well. So it's up two octaves. Now what we're doing here is just getting the texture sort of roughly where we want it. And then of course we've got to shape the sound. So let's activate filter one. I'm gonna turn down the resonance almost all the way uh, and also we need to make sure that these are all going through filter one. So we can do that here just by selecting on the filter itself. Okay, so let's start with that. And now I just wanna shape it a bit just to give it a little bit more punch than what it's got at the moment. So let's turn the attack right down. And then we're just gonna bring the sustain down a bit make this a little bit more snappy. You can zoom in using the mouse wheel as well if you want. So something like that is absolutely fine. Just gives it just a slight bit more punch, that's all. And that is the sort of main part of the sound sorted. Now we just got to tweak it a bit with some effects. So let's go to the effects page. Let's add a multiband compressor. This is a lovely compressor. And to be fair, I just like the initialized uh, sort of preset that comes with the multiband compressor. It sounds nice. It just sort of brightens it up. So we're going to leave that how it is, but I do want to add a bit of distortion as well. Let's have it on linear fold. Lovely. Let's just back off the mix a bit. Giving it a bit sort of, of digital growl. Very nice. Now let's just tweak the EQ. So we add it an EQ plugin.
just want to tame that sort of growl a little bit, not too much though. Remember when we've got our track, there's going to be guitars and leads all over the top, providing the sort of high frequencies and mid range of the track. So we don't really want too much from the bass line. Again, it's all about getting your elements to not conflict with each other. So let's go with something like that and then a bit of reverb. So bass sounds, generally speaking, you want to remove some of the low end. If you have too much reverberation on the low end, it's going to mean that the low end of your track gets very messy. So we're just gonna carve out a bit of the low frequencies from the reverb. And we don't want much, I mean, we can balance this later on, but I'm just gonna add a very small amount to the bass line. And it's sounded pretty good so far. So happy days. I think we're pretty much there with that. Let's just play it with the rest of the track.